Hey guys, uh, this is Roxy Comics, and I'm doing another live video for you today. It's been a while. Um, hope everybody's been well. I have had a crazy couple of weeks because, uh, as you may have heard, I recently got a new puppy. <laughs> uh, so my boyfriend and I have been kind of adjusting to having this little creature in our house who, you know, chews up our furniture and pees everywhere. <laughs> but it's been fun. It's been worth it. She's super cute. Uh, so today what I'm going to do is start with this sort of ink wash background uh, that I made last night. Um, and I basically just used watercolor paper for this. Um, sort of daubed ink on a uh, wet surface and then poured salt flakes over it to create this texture, uh, which I think is really cool. Um, and it's one of those things where like I was looking online for like stock images of, of watercolor effects and uh, it just kind of it didn't feel right like taking something that someone else had made for a background of my own work so I thought you know if you can't find exactly what you're looking for and if you uh, if you don't want to steal from somebody else you make it yourself so made this myself um, <clears throat> Ooh. Uh, I, no, no hablo espanol. <laughs> Pardon. I, I, I know a little bit, but it, I haven't spoken it since high school. <laughs> Someone in the comments is, is saying hello. Um, but I hope you enjoy the video anyway. Uh, so gracias for, for watching. Let's see. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, after you know, I've, I've scanned this in, I've kind of made it so that it fits in the, the window here, I'm going to apply a color filter. So uh, in Krita, that just means I go to filter uh, and I'm going to go to adjust and I think I will just do hue saturation and lightness. So if I take this top slider bar here for hue, I can kind of slide through it. You can see, you know, taking it down to sort of a bluish purple. If I take it to the right, it goes more of a turquoisey green. Um, and you can basically get a full spectrum of colors doing this. I want like a sort of mauvey reddish color. Um, so I think this is getting close. This is about what I want. Um, I'm also going to make it a little bit lighter because everything kind of shows up darker when it goes to print or when I upload it online. So I tend to just work uh, in a sort of higher key and like a lighter color palette than than what I intend the image to be. Uh, and that works out 90% of the time. <laughs> Sometimes I still have issues uh, when I upload stuff to like Webtoon. Uh, the color always gets a little bit distorted, um, especially reds for some reason. I'm not sure why. But this is looking okay right now. I'm pretty happy with this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Krita is... Uh, I think it's pretty great. It works really well for me, um, but you can customize your setup a lot. So I have like a billion color swatches and a color selector and then another like specific color selector off to the left here, um, which is probably more complex than I need to make it. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I like having all of my colors like in a little palette so that I can choose from them. And then I'll like, I'll pick a color that's close to what I want and then kind of adjust it. And, and that's kind of how I do my thing. Uh, I have layers over to the right here. Um, I use a ton of them and I barely ever remember to name them. <laughs> uh, when I do my comics, I especially have like, you know, I have at least two layers for line work um, so I can erase stuff out without uh, actually, you know, hurting the image <laughs> for lack of a better term. Like I'll have detailed line work on one layer and then like the basics underneath that. And then I have like base color, uh, which I usually only do like one or two layers of, and then I'll have a layer for shading, one for highlights, and one for like any sort of detail or texture I feel like adding in. Like if somebody has, you know, a sweater that needs like a knit texture, uh, I'll have that on its own separate layer. But this is just a one layer image right now. Um, well, it has a background behind it, but it's really just this one. Uh, so I'm going to add a layer over that, and I'm actually going to name it this time to avoid confusion. Um, I named it Pencil because this is kind of how I think from, from doing things by hand for, for so long. 
um, I'll, I'll do one layer that is effectively my blue pencil drawing. Um, so it's sort of messier and less precise, but it, it gives me an idea of where everything is eventually going to end up in the image. So what I want to do for this, I do want to make it Roxy related, um, even though this is different than what I normally have for her as far as detail and background textures. Um, I think I'm just going to draw her uh, sort of relaxing with headphones again. Uh, a lot of you seem to really like that one uh, image I did where I drew Roxy as the study girl. So uh, I think I'm going to do something that feels sort of similar to that, but just have her be like walking or standing. Um, so I've selected my brush here. Um, I've just gone to like my complete list of brushes, which is up in the corner, though I could have gone down and selected uh, just my favorites. And uh, it's right in the middle right there. Uh, this is what I use for pretty much all of my comics uh, and stuff. So I'm just going to start with a vague sort of shape for her head. Um, I always start with like this circle, uh, which is how I was taught to always start when you're drawing like a portrait of someone. Um, and I kind of make this sort of forehead and nose bridge shape for someone that's in profile. This is like the one way I can guarantee that I draw my characters somewhat consistently is uh, to start with this sort of, <laughs> I always think of it as like a dog nose shape. Um, and that's like where the nose and mouth are going to fit in. Um, but yeah, otherwise, like when I was first starting out, I didn't always do this and Roxy would end up looking very different from week to week. Um, like her eyes would be a different distance apart and the hair would never be the same. And it just took me forever to, to get any sort of consistent approach to drawing my main character. And uh, even now there's, there's variations that I wish I could uh, get rid of, but I guess you can't be perfect. Um, so I'm going to have her in some like fall clothes, I'd say like a big scooshy hoodie and a scarf and maybe a hat over her headphones. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm using the same brushes that I've been using for the last couple months now. Uh, they're just a free uh, downloadable Krita set of brushes. Uh, and I forget the name of the set, but I will post it in the links to this video because uh, I really liked them. They're just, um, the the default brushes that Krita comes with are pretty good, but um, these ones I just find are a little bit smoother and feel a little bit more like an actual ink pen or pencil or like whatever it is that they are supposed to be imitating for lack of a better word. Um, so they've been nice for me, especially as I've, I'm, I'm still kind of like transitioning from just drawing everything by hand. Um, so it's been nice to have a good set of brushes to kind of like make the line work a little bit easier. And I find I'm erasing less and less as I go. This is pretty rough. Uh, this doesn't exactly look how her eyes normally look, but like I said, I'm just trying to like lay out where everything is going to go. And actually she looks kind of small in the frame here. So I'm going to adjust this while I see it, make her a little bit bigger and just have her stand like that. <clears throat> and I'll probably erase out. Yep. I'm just going to select my shape tool, hit uh, the eraser button and go over here. Ta -da. I really like the way Krita does erasers. You don't have to select your own uh, like eraser brush. You can just switch between like drawing mode and erasing mode with the same tool, which is super convenient, I find. <clears throat> I'm going to knock down the transparency on this a little bit so that I can do my next layer. Uh, I'm going to title this line, although I think I'll probably make this like an intermediate pencil layer where I just get a little more detailed, but, uh, but still feel like free to explore uh, and like be a little bit messy with my lines still. It's like, it, it's just like a sketchier feel and it feels more natural to me. Like I'm drawing in pencil as opposed to pen. Um, I think I'm a much better, uh, 
penciler than I would be an inker. Uh, like if I were to actually work in you know, the comics industry, like if I worked in at Marvel or DC, I would probably be much better, of much more use as, as a penciler than an inker. just like sort of more free form and I don't know I think it I make these little mistakes that I can kind of adjust slightly and, and come up with the right thing um, <clears throat> just sort of feels more like the way I think and the way I draw than, uh, than inking does so I have like a semi-transparent brush uh, that it's pressure sensitive here um, and it doesn't really imitate a pencil um, but you can kind of scribble with it for lack of a better term I, I keep saying that phrase I say that too much you can treat it like it's a pencil and sort of sketch with it as opposed to having to know exactly you know, where your lines are going to be and have this really hard edge to them um, like here's a non-transparent one and you can kind of see the edges of this are much crisper than in the drawing I'm currently doing. And uh, when you're just in the penciling stage, that can uh, not quite look right sometimes. Whereas uh, the, the transparent ones are a little more forgiving. So there we go. <clears throat> I missed doing these. I feel like it's been forever. <laughs> um, hope you guys are doing OK. I'm doing pretty well. I'm just going to try and remember how to draw a scarf here. I tend to draw clothes that are in season, so it's been a long time since I've drawn any like winter clothes. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do for the final is have the background be this one color and then have another layer underneath here where I add like a color overlay to that. Uh oh, I'm in the wrong color space. Okay, so I'm actually going to switch here. Um, I'm going to go to image and convert image color space because I'm working in CMYK right now and I didn't mean to do that. So I'm going to switch to RGB. Uh, which is better for you know your monitor. It's essentially red, green, blue, which is how computer monitors see color. Uh, and it's I, I find it looks better in in most like online spaces, uh, which is probably where this image will mostly end up. If I make a print, I might come back to CMYK and convert it again. But for now, um, I'm just going to select RGB. Uh, I'm going to use black point compensation because sometimes when you switch color spaces, uh, I find that the the darkest colors sort of get lifted out and it can look very grayed out. So this should hopefully look pretty okay when I do it. So it's going to take it a little while here to convert everything. There it is. So yeah, um, you notice some subtle changes sometimes when you switch, but for this one, I, I think it's it's pretty much still what I wanted it to be. Um, so now that it's in the right space, I'm gonna scroll down from my uh, my layer menu to uh, just color mode. And let's see, I'm gonna get my brush here. I'm gonna select kind of a turquoisey blue, um, at least for now. I might change it later, but I think like over the mauve, this is gonna really pop and look cool. So actually this being like a limited color palette image, um, I'll probably have some shading in the drawing, but I don't think I'll have any other actual colors um, to add to it. So this is just to sort of act as a placeholder and uh, give me an idea of what the eventual image will look like. Um, so I kind of like this, but I think the background is coming through a bit too dark. So there's a few things I can do about that. I'm going to go to my background layer. Uh, first thing I'm going to try is bumping the opacity down. So if I bump it down to around 75, let's see. It still looks a little bit too 
contrasty for me, and I think it's sort of solving the wrong problems because it's getting rid of a lot of the, the brightness of the color. Um, so another thing I can do is just over where her body is. So like not this background part, but just over like her face and stuff. I'm going to go to select, um, and just select opaque because this is the, the layer that I used for the color underneath her. Um, I'm going to add another layer <laughs> again. Uh, and right now I'm just going to draw a shape. Um, so it's just going to look solid for the moment, but I'm going to bump the opacity down on this. And it's kind of put a veil over what would otherwise be a very, very contrast heavy kind of background image. Um, you can see where all like the little salt crystal shapes and the, the ink wash is, is coming through really heavy uh, behind her. So if I add this here, I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to go back to hue saturation and lightness. Bump that up just a bit. There we go. So if you look now, it's basically the same um, shade as I was going for, but it's just sort of made everything a little bit softer. And I think that that's working really well. So I'm going to go to select, deselect, so I can keep working on my full surface. My color is now different because I use the adjustment bar. So I'm actually going to go into my layer, isolate it, use the eyedropper tool, pick up the new color, <clears throat> get out of the isolation mode, and come back. And now I should be able to just yeah, color in the same shade as, uh, as the layer below. So again, this is kind of getting ahead of myself. I would normally not start on color uh, until after my line work was completely solid. But um, I don't know. I, for this one, I just kind of wanted to show you guys a quick tutorial of how I work and uh, wanted to get on to the next stage before it was too late. So, so now that that's done with, I think I'm going to bump down the opacity on this line work real quick. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to pause for a second and look at the comments. Sometimes I uh, I fail to multitask. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Oh, uh, someone's asking what kind of doggos I got. Uh, well, we already had a golden retriever. Uh, her name is Rigby, and she is so incredibly sweet and wonderful that we wanted to get her a friend. <laughs> um, so we got this little puppy three weeks ago. Her name is Sadie, uh, and she is a husky mix. Uh, we're kind of uncertain what you know all the breeds that went into her are because she looks oddly just like an Australian Shepherd. Um, <laughs> like she's speckled, she has the floppy ears, uh, and she's sort of fuzzy in the way that Aussies are. Although she does have like this kind of woolly husky undercoat, <laughs> which is really cute. Um, but yeah, she's a husky mix. She's got some poodle, some uh, Labrador retriever, and we think some golden retriever in her too, but we're not sure. She's super sweet. When she's not like ripping apart the furniture or peeing on the floor, she's super sweet. <laughs> she's still kind of at that, uh, that really young age where we can't exactly train her. Like dogs don't really fully develop until they're like 12 weeks old and she's like just turned 11 weeks old. So we kind of just have to like accept that we, we might not be getting a full night's sleep for the next you know, month or two or more. But she's been worth it so far. And it's great to see her play with our other dog. Like they get along great, which is uh, not necessarily something that always happens when you get a new dog in the house. So we're very grateful. in the other direction. Sorry, I'm going to pause for a minute here. Here we go. Hmm. Um, oh, yeah, I, I also rotate uh, my canvas quite a lot. Uh, I 
you can just do that with the number keys in Krita, which I love. I'm not sure if that's a Photoshop feature too, um, but I didn't start doing it until I used Krita. Um, it's just, I don't know, it imitates how I actually draw. Like I, I turn the pages upside down and sideways and whatever will help me you know, get the line I want. Especially when I'm using like a brush pen, I'm supposed to pull it in a certain direction. I'm gonna zoom out here quick. Um, when I'm uh, when I'm working, I like to sometimes turn off the pencil layer just to make sure my line is looking good. Sometimes it looks better with the pencil underneath it, so I might actually end up keeping um, at least this layer. I'll get rid of like the structural layer where you can see the circle and the, the sort of shapes that I started out with because those aren't actually you know, helping and you wouldn't be able to see you know the inside of her skull. But if I remove that, it's uh, pretty good still. So I might keep this pencil layer. We'll see. I'll zoom in a little bit closer. <clears throat> I'm actually gonna switch to an oval brush. I find that sometimes switching brushes, like the the circle brush is what I use the most often because uh, it's the most, it creates a really consistent line. But the oval ones and the rectangle ones can sometimes just feel smoother when I'm doing something like detail work, like doing this little nostril line or uh, the, the lines in the ear. Um, sometimes it helps to just have something that's really smooth so you can sweep like that. And I find that the circle ones kind of, they can get a little bit like less evenly curved, I will say. So I'll switch back and forth sometimes. Certain brushes are good for different kinds of work too. Um, I rarely ever use the rectangle brush for Roxy, uh, but if I'm doing something like sort of more like superhero-ish, I'll say, uh, that brush is one of my favorites. It just creates a really dynamic line and uh, I don't know. It, I hate describing things in terms of like uh, feminine masculine, but it's sort of a masculine line <laughs> for lack of, uh, well, I don't know. So if I'm working on like a sci-fi kind of superhero comic that's more action oriented, um, it's it's a more dynamic shape than the oval brush tends to be. <clears throat> Sadie has finally stopped uh, whimpering outside my door. Yeah, that's another thing about the new puppy is uh, because of quarantine and because we're both home so often, uh, I'm pretty sure that our dogs are going to have like the worst separation anxiety ever once this is over. Um, so if I am even like in a different room and the door is closed, Sadie starts to kind of freak out. Oh, there she is again. Apologies if you can hear that. She she gets a little nervous when she's uh, when she's separate from her humans. My boyfriend's in there with her though, so she should be okay. <laughs> I always struggle with the eyes. I, half the time when I'm doing these videos, I feel like I'm doing one of those artist confessionals with you guys. Like, guess what? I don't actually know how to draw my main character. <laughs> um, I'll just tell you where all the problem areas are. That uh, despite drawing her every week for the last three years, I still can't manage to you know get her eyes consistent all the time. Um, something about this doesn't look right. It's too round at the front. I guess I have to see how the sausage is made now. You're gonna lose faith in me as an artist. There we go. I'm just gonna give her kind of a neutral expression. I don't want her to look sad, but just like she's sort of pensive and listening to music. I also often start with like actually drawing her full head and then I'll like add headphones over top of that. I know it's inefficient, but I, don't know, I like laying out where everything's gonna be before I actually draw it. 
Hmm. Hmm. Oh, someone in the comments is like, I sound like Rin. Who is Rin? I'm uh, I'm so out of touch. <laughs> um, but I'm glad you like watching me draw. It's uh, it's super fun to do these for you guys, and uh, you know, I, I love watching stuff like this sometimes. Like especially if I just want to relax and like watch someone make something. It's uh, it's always fun to watch like how other people draw or sculpt or do crafts or whatever their their creative pursuit is. Mm. <clears throat> this is getting out of hand. <laughs> Sometimes I'll make a mistake with line work and instead of erasing over it right away, I'll try to like draw over top of it. <laughs> it's like when you make a mistake doing your eyeliner and you just keep thickening it up until you eventually end up with like raccoon eyes. That's the equivalent of what I do artistically. <laughs> Just give her like a slight little swoopy hoodie sleeve here. And how am I going to do this scarf? I'm going to broaden up my brush a bit. Just going to do two little ends of the scarf. There's one that's closer to us. And one that's like, eh, more straight. I'm gonna do a little fringe on the end. I love drawing clothing details, and that's not something I get to do too often because I'm usually kind of on the clock when I'm doing my comic. Um, so when I'm doing these postcards, these extra things that end up on my Patreon or just you know as as video fodder for you guys to enjoy. Uh, I like to experiment a little more with clothing details. So the line work is at a decent state of finish for you know, the basics. So right now I'm going to drop this pencil layer out from underneath it and see how it looks. Um, I'm actually going to drop the second one too. I think I like it better with that left in. Although I'm going to fix this one part around the soft edge brush, bump down the size quite a bit, and switch to eraser mode. There we go. Just kind of want it to add dimension to the line work without uh, differing from it too much. I don't want it to clearly look like there's a line drawing underneath it that was the basis for it. I just kind of want it to have this organic edge. So. Erase out some of the details that are messier um, and sort of smooth out the edges where I can. That can go away too. All right, I think we're looking good. That color is, is messed up though. I need to fix that. Um, <clears throat> do I really need this layer? Yeah, I guess I do. Um, so I'm going to do a couple things that are probably going to look slightly confusing to you guys. I'm going to go in and isolate this layer again. This is the darker one that I drew first that's, uh, that's on a different layer mode than the other. Um, since uh, this is mostly white here, I'm just going to draw a shape. It's supposed to try to get the brushwork over it really precisely because you, know, you can't really see the edge that well. So I'm just going to draw where the line work is, and that way I know I'm getting the entire shape because uh, this will just fill in everything as opposed to me like trying to color it in myself and maybe like missing the odd, you know, awkward triangle on the inside. Second thing I'm going to do is erase uh, this back part because that's uh, not actually Part of the shape now. I thought it would be, but I was wrong. Um, just gonna get the little pieces that I missed here and there with a brush. 
these ones I can see more clearly because the background's darker. Uh, certain layer modes will uh, show up much better on a dark background than a light one. So if you're working over white, it's uh, sometimes helps to like switch or like have a layer in between that's gray that you can uh, that you can pop in and out of and to make sure you have the edge right. So that layer's done. Um, now I'm going to do it again with this other layer. So <laughs> isolate, eyedropper tool. And uh, I'm actually going to completely erase the shape I have. Oh, <laughs> except I forgot to pick eraser mode. There it is. I'm erasing this one out. And I'm going to go in and select opaque on the layer I just did. So this will just be the exact same shape as the layer underneath it. So since I have that area selected, I just need to draw like a big rectangle over it and it will create this shape. And then I'll deselect it and we'll be done. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna go in and fix this hair. Yeah, this is sketchy in a good way, I think. Mm. Okay. So what's left to do now is I'm going to add some detailing line work, and I'm actually creating another layer to do that, um, especially for like the black in her hair. I find that it's nice to have um, just a separate layer for that as opposed to putting it with the line work. So like if I'm doing this and I go over the edge of her ear, I can just erase this out without affecting any of the other details in here. So I think that like it's important to have separate layers up to the point where that can help you. Um, it can get to a point where it's it's too much, where it's overwhelming. Um, but to the point where like it's actually serving a function for you to have an extra layer and it actually does something to make your life easier then you should you should not hesitate to like you know put 50 layers in your image like there is no right or wrong amount of layers to have I'm actually not sure about this brush for her hair. Uh, I'm going to put that on invisible for now and create another layer just to compare these two. And I'm going to switch to a transparent brush. So I like this softer quality that it has. Um, so I'm just going to sort of do this thing again. Kind of imitates actual hair a little more than than the hard edge brush does. We'll see how it looks in the final image. So, knock down the opacity, erase it out of her ear, put that back up again. So, it's going to compare. Here is option one and option two. I think I like, which one do I like better? <laughs> I think I like option two. Weigh in with opinions if, you, if you've got them. <laughs> I can also make this brush a little bit finer uh, so that it's sort of in between the two. Yeah, I think I like the finer tip brush. Just like adds more of a Realistic hair texture. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep stopping while I like check if I've missed any comments. I'm trying to keep this going as best I can. Oh, my alarm's going off telling me I have to feed my dog. Hopefully. My boyfriend 
can do that one instead. <laughs> So this is the part where I'm basically doing the same thing over and over again. So sorry if the video gets really boring and repetitive at this point. There's just kind of not much to talk about in terms of tutorial. Uh, okay, I have my brush selected. I'm just kind of following the direction that her hair is going, which uh, sort of... She has very cartoonish hair, like it doesn't quite do what natural hair would do, um, so it's, it's sort of hard to give it too much of a natural texture without it looking weird. Like I don't, I never draw where her part is because it actually kind of doesn't make sense <laughs> where it is uh, from both angles. Um, like she has a side part on both sides of her head essentially, <laughs> um, but I, don't know, I think it looks cute in profile. So. This is the way I'm going to continue to draw her for the foreseeable future. I did a thing for a while where uh, everybody was still quarantining and nobody was getting haircuts where I, I like let Roxy's hair grow out <laughs> and uh, I started like pinning back her bangs every week. But I think the hair is like one of the few things that really identifies my character. So I'm just going to kind of keep drawing it in the classic way, um, even though, I don't know, sometimes I wish I could change it up a bit. But like I don't have a cartoony like uniform for her to wear the way other characters sometimes do. Uh, like, you know, everybody from the Scooby-Doo cast wears the same outfit every episode, and uh, that's like part of how you identify them, so feel kind of like a little bit of regret that I didn't give her more of a, a look when I was first drawing her. I've been trying to rein it in and like give her a distinct style lately. I've, I've only drawn her in like gray and black clothing um, as opposed to what I used to do which is like <laughs> base her clothing off of my actual wardrobe and give her a different shirt every week. Mm. I'm giving her what appears to be a Hogwarts scarf. I think this is just the way I draw scarves <laughs> as a default. Um, I should make her a Ravenclaw. Although I feel like maybe she's more of a Hufflepuff. Not sure. I go back and forth. I feel like knowing your Hogwarts house is like an essential part of being a millennial or a person of a certain age, I guess. If you grew up with Harry Potter, like you, you have to have an opinion on what Harry Potter house you would be in, regardless of whether you read the series. So what I'm doing now is uh, I'm actually cross-hatching a little bit of shading in, which is something I never do in the comics, but uh, I really like the way it looks with this brush. It kind of gives it this soft, like, pencil shaded look, despite the fact that it's more of an inking technique. Um, but you can see, like, you know, the sort of subtle edges that it has, and the soft edge of the line is, I don't know. It, I find it comforting to draw this way. It reminds me of how I used to draw, like, in my school notebooks with ballpoint pen. Um, and, uh, you know, the edge of this looks really messed up. I'm probably going to go in and erase like the little straggly bits here. If I zoom in, you can see um, the watercolor underneath it isn't a perfectly straight edge, so I probably won't make that happen, but I should probably erase out like this part, this part, anything where the, the digital painting is overlapping extending beyond the boundaries of the watercolor. <clears throat> my friend Steven is in the comments. He's saying, my hair doesn't do what actual hair does either. Um, <laughs> Steven's one of those people who uh, shaved his head during quarantine, <laughs> which I think looks good. 
I, I don't have the courage for that thing myself, but, you know. I'm going to shade a little bit up underneath the scarf, like where it meets with her chest here. I really gave her no shoulders in this. I'm trying to make her, like, still her cartoony self, despite this is despite this being more of a sort of portraity, serious-looking image than I normally do. Hmm. <clears throat> This is the dangerous part because like I meant to make this video just like 20 minutes long and we're already way past that <laughs> but this is the part of drawing that I could do like forever like the shading is the part where I never know when it's done because there's always a little bit more you could do um, if that makes any sense I'm sure it will if, if, if you guys have done like creative pursuits of your own it's, it's hard to stop some things once you get going I think that's a little bit too rough looking, so I'm going to actually get the eraser. Uh, well, I'm going to switch this to eraser mode, bump down the opacity, and see if I can't soften this edge up a little bit. I don't want her to look like she's, you know, an etching, or like she's carved out of wood. Let's kind of soften that up. There we go. I should maybe add more of the hair. Since I'm not going to have like highlights and shadows in this one, I should probably do more of this sort of dark shading than I normally would. And bump the opacity on this brush back up. I'm actually going to have this shape connect to this shape, which I never do. This is where her hair like doesn't quite look like real hair. It's doing sort of an anime hair thing, but even anime hair is more realistic than this. Anime hair at least like moves in a realistic way. It's hard to imagine Roxy in like a stiff breeze, like what her hair would do. Um, if someone ever cosplays Roxy, I would be very interested to see that, like how they would tackle the one, the hair, and two, the problem of like there not being really a Roxy costume that she wears from week to week. Hmm. Yes, uh, the puppy is scratching at my door. <laughs> I, I hope you guys couldn't really hear that when it was happening, but she, uh, she's she got a big voice for a little little creature. Um, she does get a little whiny when she's closed off from her humans, or even just when there's a room in the house she can't get to. We try not to let her into the art room because she'll destroy everything, but uh, she's not happy about that. She's trying to persuade us that She'd be fine. Let's I should probably turn this right side up again so I can see what it's actually going to look like. That's looking pretty good. Actually, I think I'm going to make this little lady sideburn completely black. With some, oh, no. Some little strands coming off here and there. <clears throat> There we go. Yeah, I said that I was going to put headphones on her, and I still haven't done that. I'm going to actually do another layer <laughs> that's uh, I'm going to select a different color real quick. Let's go with purple, pink. I'm just going to do pencil. Rough sketch over top of where her ear is. I'll make these sort of cartoonishly big to go with her cartoonishly large head. <laughs> I think the puppy has stopped. That's good. It's really sweet that she loves me, but I don't want her to be sad or distressed. Hopefully she's just out there playing with my boyfriend. She has a billion toys throughout the house. She does this thing, which is weird. She like hoards all of her toys in her crate, like in the little cage that she sleeps in. 
So it's like this tiny, tiny little crate that has like 20 toys in it, almost to the point where she can't fit in it herself. It's like the way a little girl might collect stuffed animals. That looks pretty good. And we'll have the cord coming down and disappearing into the scarf. Yeah, I like that. And I don't have to draw her hand holding an iPod or anything, it'll just be off camera. <clears throat> so since I have the completed drawing underneath this uh, and I don't really want to cover up the sketch that I just did, adding another layer and I'm just gonna color in uh, in some sort of like light color. Um, and get the turquoise. Actually, no, I'm gonna just make it sort of a white gray for now. Eventually I'll combine all these layers into one image so it'll make sense, but uh, right now I'm gonna keep it separate. Just wanna see what I'm doing. So I'm just sort of roughly coloring in this, this white where the headphones are going to be um, so I don't get any noise from the details underneath while I'm trying to finish up the line work. So now I'm going to switch back to the color that everything underneath is. And go back to my hard edge round brush. I already messed up. Draw around the edges of this. And kind of trying to make it appear to sort of sit on her hair naturally. So the hair kind of comes up underneath the edge of the headphones like it's being pressed down. I'll take the image a bit. This brush is a little too big. I'm going to bump it down to. 16 instead of 25 pixels. This doesn't have to follow the line exactly, so I'm just going to kind of try and make it as smooth as possible, still following the curve of her head. And then for this, I think I'll switch to the square brush, create sort of a stitching line. Nothing fancy. Switching brushes again. I should probably look at reference for these. I kind of just wing it for, for most things. I think these are believable, those headphones. But I should look at reference and realistic headset on her. Like if I were doing the comic, I'd probably do that. Um. <whistles> Here's Puppy again. She hears our neighbor's dog. She does not like that. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to start this part over. I don't like how this is turning out. It's like a little bit too scratchy and imprecise and sketchy. I'm going to switch to the sketchier pen, like the transparent one, and sort of draw this softer edged circle around where the outside of this headphone would be. This kind of works with my style. Like I, I'm not someone who likes to draw a really confident line. I, I tend to just do a chip away at it a little bit at a time, like I'm carving it out. Um, and this brush works much better for that. Hmm. <laughs> Questions in the comments. Okay, we just got one. Uh, what should I have for dinner? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anybody else have a vote? I had Skyline last night. Skyline chili at home. Let's see. 
been doing a lot more cooking since uh, since quarantine started. Nothing fancy, but like, I don't know. I do a lot of breakfast kind of meals, waffles and eggs and stuff. Uh, I did make some chicken tikka masala that was really, really good, um, which I should make again. I highly recommend it if, uh, if you've got a good like Indian grocery near you. Um, get some of that tamarind chutney to go with it. It's so good. Mm, tacos. Tacos are another thing that we've started doing more. Taco night's just so easy, and you know, who doesn't love tacos? We recently discovered this really good taco truck near where we live. It's called uh, La, Pobl uh, La Poblanita, I think, and it's uh, just one of those like permanent taco trucks that's sort of posted up uh, in a neighborhood near ours, and uh, they do really good chicken tinga. Okay, so I think I have the line drawing pretty much done for these headphones, although I am actually going to go in and make this a little bit softer around the edges using the softer brush. There we go. Okay, now we're done. So what I'm going to do Get rid of the purple line. And that white really didn't cover much, did it? I'm gonna go back in, select this color again, uh, try to get right up to the edge of where I was supposed to be. So covering everything up that's not part of the headphones. Um, which is kind of easier said than done. This is all kind of same color, but it's okay. We got this. If I weren't pressed for time, I would just make the layer underneath it transparent. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> this video is already pushing an hour, so I think I want to try and get my act together here. Okay, so I have that colored in. What I'm going to do here is select opaque, which again just sort of draws out this shape of the headphones. Uh, I'm going to make this layer invisible, and then I'm going to go over to my line work layer, make sure I have it on eraser mode, hit delete, uh, go to the layer underneath that, which is the detail line, hit delete, and underneath that there's one more layer, hit delete. There we have it. Uh, so the problem I have now is where this blue edge is now. That's not where it used to be. So you guys probably know the drill at this point. I'm going to go down to the blue layer number one, isolate it, use the color selector, get out of isolation mode, color in that little corner and up along this edge. Sure, I get all the nooks and crannies that I may have missed before. We'll be zoomed in like this. Oh, and it looks like I went over the line in a couple places. And we're going to do the same deal with this layer up on top of it. Select the color, leave isolation mode. I think I got the wrong color selected. Hold on. We're going to try this again. Somehow I got a darker color than I meant to. There we go. And we're going to go up around this edge again so it's smoothed out. And then we're going to erase out where I went over the lines because uh, I cannot color inside the lines any better than I could when I was five, apparently. Uh, and down in this corner, looks like there's still a little bit oh, not to erase. There we go. Okay. So I think this is looking pretty close to done. Hmm. Oh man, 
I'm sorry, Sean. It lives in the middle of nowhere. Taco trucks don't exist here. That is a tragedy. I love, I love taco trucks. Yeah, maybe, maybe homemade tacos are the way to go. Just make sure to get like corn, tort corn tortillas and cilantro. I think is is always a necessity for a good taco. Oh, this didn't select the right shape. One thing I've noticed about Krita um, is sometimes the select tool doesn't actually select what it's supposed to. Um, like it'll select whatever shape the layer used to be. Uh, like I used to have some of the blue coming over the edge of this line here and it's actually selected that area. But another thing I've noticed is occasionally, um, like if I make another layer here and just pick up red, it actually doesn't have that shape selected. Like I'm coloring over this entire shape and it only shows up in the actual area that I wanted it to. It just looks like the select tool has overshot uh, where it was supposed to go. So that's sort of an odd feature that, uh, that I'm not sure exactly how they could fix, but this took some getting used to for me. Um, so what I'm going to do here, uh, just so it looks a little bit more finished, is I'm going to make a gradient that's a slightly different color, maybe a little bit of purple. And I'm going to just pull from the bottom. It's a little too dark, I think, but I'm liking the overall feel of it. So I'm going to turn it down in opacity. Um, so it just sort of fades from this sort of indigo purple up into this turquoise blue. Uh, and I think it just it's a way to give more dimension to uh, sort of monochromatic images. And I think it's working pretty well here. Um, so yeah, I'd say this is, uh, this is pretty much done. I'm going to go back down toward the bottom here and uh, erase out some of the messy line work and make it match up with the background a little bit more. But I'm happy with this and I'm glad you guys uh, got to watch me do it. I'll probably be sending this out to my Patreon supporters, and uh, I'll post a finished version of it on the Facebook page. Uh, so anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope I can get back into the rhythm of doing them more often, because I do enjoy them. Uh, I'll, I'll come back with more puppy updates and uh, taco suggestions <laughs> as uh, as I see fit, and, and as long as you guys will hang out and watch, I will I'll try to keep the videos coming. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Uh, but I'm going to sign off now, and I'll have to talk to you in another week or so. Bye!